Do you love a one-pot meal? Do you like a one-pot dessert? If you do, you've come to the right place because I have some of my favorite one-pot meals and desserts right here in this video. You are gonna love them. Today I'm making another great recipe, roast chicken with ginger, garlic, and scallion that you are going to absolutely adore. To start off with, take eight scallions. I have them chopped up already. Put them into your food processor. You're gonna make a paste to rub under the skin of your roast chicken. Quarter cup of chopped ginger, four cloves of garlic, a tablespoon of coarse salt, three tablespoons of a neutral flavored oil like a safflower oil or even a canola oil will work, and a teaspoon of lime zest. This makes such a flavorful paste that you rub under your chicken, you're not gonna believe what a difference it makes in your roasted chicken. And then just puree everything to a paste. You're only gonna need half of this paste for your chicken, so save the other half to toss with your vegetables or to serve on the side of your chicken. For four to six servings, I like to use about a four pound chicken. You wanna loosen the skin. This enables you to put the paste underneath the skin so it gets right in contact with the chicken. And then rub half the paste under the skin and over the meat. You might think it's a little bit awkward or you don't want to touch chicken that much, but you're going to love the payoff of this. I guarantee it. Tying the legs of the chicken together helps it cook more evenly, and it also ends in a nicer presentation. To make this a classic one pot, you're going to need to have some vegetables to serve with your chicken. Today I'm going to serve parsnips and Brussels sprouts. The parsnips will go in now, so toss them with about a tablespoon of oil. This is a pound and three quarters of parsnips cut into three inch pieces. Spread them out as evenly as possible and then get this into a 450 degree oven for about 25 minutes. So it's only partially cooked right now and that's perfect because I wanna add my Brussels sprouts. It's 12 ounces of Brussels sprouts tossed with another tablespoon of oil, a little bit of salt, pepper, and then toss. At this point you're gonna to wanna to turn your parsnips over as well so Give those a flip. Brussels sprouts cook really quickly at 450 degrees. Put this back in the oven and cook it until a thermometer inserted in the thickest part of the thigh reads 165. That should take about 25 to 35 more minutes. There you have it. Super amazing, caramelized, perfectly cooked vegetables. I'm gonna dip some in my extra sauce and give it a try. Mmm. Holy camoly, the flavor that you get from that is incredible. Do you see what's in front of me? It's five ingredients and it's gonna make one of the tastiest, most delicious beef stews that you ever threw five ingredients into. One and a half pounds of beef chuck, a quarter cup of flour, three quarters of a pound of new potatoes, diced tomatoes with green chilies, and a bag of frozen peas and carrots. <laughs> and guess what else? You can make it in a slow cooker. So you throw everything into the pot, you come back five hours later, it's done. Add your one and a half cups of beef, and toss it with the flour, the quarter cup of flour, right here in this pot so you're saving on cleanup. Season it with salt and pepper. Then add your two cans of tomatoes. These are diced tomatoes with chilies, two 14.5 ounce cans. Then you add your potatoes. It's three quarters of a pound of new potatoes halved. Now if you were making this on top of the stove, which you could do, you would add the potatoes later. But in the slow cooker, they go in now. And a half a cup of water. If you were making this on the top of the stove, you'd use a little bit more water too. A lot of water accumulates in a slow cooker. Cover it, turn it on high, and let it cook for five hours. What have you been doing for the last five hours? I've been reading a good book. Now the only thing that's left to do is add our peas and carrots. It's about a half of this bag. This is a one pound bag, so about eight ounces. Add half your bag of frozen peas and carrots. Make sure that you wrap this up really nice when you put it back in the freezer. Just stir it in, cover it up, let it sit for five minutes, and the carrots and the peas, they won't get mushy and gross. They'll be nice and tender and just cooked through and warm. This stew has got it going on, and it's hearty and satisfying and one pot and slow cooker. Today I'm making a six ingredient giant crumble cookie. It's gonna be this big, crumbly, shareable cookie. You're gonna love it, and it couldn't be any easier. Whisk together one and three quarter cups of all-purpose flour, one and a half cups of blanched almonds that have been ground or almond flour, three quarters of a cup of sugar, 
quarter teaspoon of coarse salt, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. What you're gonna do is just whisk everything together and then cut some butter in. 14 tablespoons of butter that's been cut into pieces. You wanna make sure that all the dry ingredients are coated with the butter and that it's fully worked in. And then take three quarters of your dough mixture and pour it into a buttered 10 inch springform pan. Doesn't really matter how high the sides are because this cookie isn't very thick. So 10 by three, 10 by two, it kind of doesn't matter. Press your mixture firmly into the bottom of the springform pan and make sure that it's nice and even. Then take the remaining dough and sort of clump it over the top, kind of like you're making a crumb topping on a pie or a crumb cake. What you're doing is you're making a two layer cookie that of course will bake together, one being the firm base that will cut and the top being sort of a clumpy, crunchy crumb topping. It's really, really fun. Have your oven at 350 degrees and bake until it begins to turn golden about 25 minutes. Then reduce the oven temperature to 300 and bake it until it's nice and dry about 10 minutes more. When your cookie comes out of the oven, let it cool on a cooling rack and then you can release the sides. Pretty neat, huh? I love it. You might want to use a thin spatula to make sure that it releases fully from the bottom. And then people just reach in and pull off a piece and enjoy it.